Dark implants. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. <laughs> this is take two, by the way. Today, this was a day where the Lord woke me up with things that he was showing me. And he woke me up with something to say to today. It is uh, 7.59 a.m. my time. This is take two. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was one of those days where everything got put aside. And to pay attention to this, what the Lord was saying to me. And um, he's given me something to say today. So, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me as we go through the scriptures today. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 10. Psalm 10. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 11. We're going to cover um, some familiar territory here, but it is very meet in the light of certain circumstances that have arose of late. And it is also a healthy reminder, brethren, that we need to be on the lookout for certain things. And we can't allow ourselves high to fall for those who use infirmity as a way marker, as a cover. We have to be aware of these people. So, Please follow me along in the scriptures. Psalm 10, verses 1 on to verse 11, to start. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth, doth persecute the poor. And what does our Lord say? Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In the context that we're looking at, keep in mind for our instruction in righteousness that poor here, number one, does not mean always lack of this. Okay? Poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor. Even James talks about how the poor are made rich in faith. Because, see, when you're poor, you're dependent on the Lord. When you're rich, you're self-sufficient. So in context here, remember, poor are dependent. Poor in the eyes of the world, but rich in faith. Remember that. We have the church of the living God. To the world standard, we are poor. But we are rich in faith in Christ Jesus our Lord, our God, our Father, our Savior. Remember that. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. And who is the king of the children of pride? Leviathan, Satan, Lucifer, okay? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. That ought to be a very good warning to those of you who struggle with covetousness. Hi. Yeah. The wicked through the pride of his countenance. Countenance. Remember, countenance is the shoe of your body. Countenance, body, visage, face. The wicked through the pride of his countenance. <clears throat> Look all astute. Got a nice tie on. Got a nice little hat on. A big smile. Yeah. Yeah. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Well, that's obvious. Why? Because pride is there. Remember, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Carnal, fleshly. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Okay? The natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord, because they are foolishness unto him. 
or her. But see, pride, countenance, countenance, the bodily appearance, fleshly. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Why? Because they're taken with their own thoughts. Like it says in verse 2, let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. See, wickedness is up there and wickedness is right down there. Okay? Verse 5, his ways are grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Yeah, because I just believed. Or I have a million dollars. I love everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was baptized. I ate the cookie today. <laughs> his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. So verse 7 denotes deception in voice, sweet words, deceiving uh, the hearts of the simple through fair words and speeches. Beware of philosophy. Okay? Sweet talkers, passive talkers, stuff like that. But that denotes that kind of fraud, see. Verse 8. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. Lurking. Lurking. Hanging out. Just waiting to snatch people. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Remember in context, poor. Poor saints. Okay? Poor is not necessarily denoting lack of money. Okay? Remember that. Poor denotes dependency upon another. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father. Self-sufficiency, worldly riches, that's Satan. You're dependent on your flesh. You're dependent on the devil, see? Remember that. And this, who is being described, verse 7, their mouth is full of cursing, deceit, and fraud under his tongue is mischief and vanity. So that means that they're speaking sweet things, trying to uplift you with kind words, but secretly, secretly. What's that? Under their tongue. Under their tongue is mischief and vanity. Trying to wor uh, worm you over with sweet words, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Verse 9. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. Satan, who walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's in 1 Peter chapter 5. Okay? He lieth and wait to catch the poor. The poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. And what is that net? Cares of this world, praises of men, deceitfulness of riches, covetousness of stuff. Verse 10. He coucheth, he croucheth, excuse me, and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten, he hideth his face, he will never see it. There are those out there who, verse 7, utilize that. Lots of these coadjutors have done that. They use, try to worm in, infiltrate with sweet words. Uh, they'll oftentimes try to uh, warm you over with gifts and their sweet words. Then they'll get in. Then they'll drop a bomb prematurely, which causes confusion, which doesn't really work well for them. Praise the Lord. But then, looking at verse 10, he croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Now, we are told as the church of the living God to humble ourselves before the Lord. Absolutely. But this humbling, 
This is the humbling of himself of, a, of an aggressor. May feign himself. Who feigns himself, you know, to look weak. To look very, very weak. To look like, you know, oh. And they hide behind that. See, what, what some of these infiltrators will do, they will set up a way marker. Okay? Okay? They may have a legitimate affliction or infirmity. They may have a legitimate disability, whether it's a physical one or a mental one. Okay? They may have these things. And whereas those who are of the church of the living God, whom the Lord can make strong through that, these, on the other hand, as denoted in verse 7 and in verse 10, we'll set this up for you. Just like, look at me. I'm, I'm so frail and weak. I'm sick. I'm so sick. But yet they'll go forward in evil, promoting satanic doctrines of the love gospel or easy believism. I've called on the Lord uh, 25 times. That kind of stuff. They'll use a mental disability as something to fall back on to garner sympathy, while they themselves, while they have a legitimate uh, illness, um, infirmity, a legitimate mental disability, they will use that as a cover to promote themselves, false doctrine, or whatever it is. And then once a light is shine on them, it's like, hey, they'll fall, they'll fall back to this way marker. So, oh, I'm just this frail, weak, skinny little guy who has, wouldn't hurt a fly. and But see, they go back to that way marker, but they go forward. They continue to go forward in evil with false doctrine, with a false gospel, with another Jesus. And see, they work off of your sympathy. See, some of these coadjutors, just some, <laughs> go away, go take a long walk off of a short pier, you know, go pound some sand, okay? Blow it out your nose, go away, okay? <laughs> these, those types of coadjutors, you know, whatever. It's the ones that have a legitimate ailment of some sort. And they set that up to establish to you rapport, they call it. They set that up. But then they go forward to infiltrate under that guise, that way marker. And whenever a light has shined upon, yeah, whenever a light is shined upon them, what do they do? What do you do? You go back here, don't you? You go back to that. I'm feeble-minded. I have a disability. And you know what? Maybe you do. But like I said, there are those who use that and are as evil as evil can be. That man from Australia that I made mention of, who has a legitimate disability, a mental disability, whatever it is. The guy is a devil promoting easy believism. And then I've seen it. He's been called about. And then what does he do? He goes back to the way, Mark. Well, I have a disability. He croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Satan making himself humble, that the poor may fi fall by his strong ones. Same principle. Same principle. Using an outwardly weak-looking individual, whether it be physically or have a mental thing, and going forth promoting all kinds of wicked evil that you could possibly imagine. Want a good example of this? Go to Jeremiah chapter 41. Jeremiah chapter 41, just one verse. Ishmael, Ishmael, Nebuchadnezzar comes, and we're, we're going to be in the book of Jeremiah here in a little bit, but uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar comes and just whips the snot out of Jerusalem, sets up Gedaliah, the son of Shaphan, I believe it is, or Gedaliah, okay? Sets up Gedaliah, Gedaliah is warned about Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, right? What is that? And yeah, Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, okay? It's like, hey, Ishmael's going to kill you. Um, Gedaliah is like, ah, no, he ain't. 
He does. Kills him. And then Ishmael does something very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, this Ishmael guy who is of the seed royal, uh, the son of uh, Nathaniah, uh, that is Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, and the prince, princes of the king. That's in Jeremiah chapter 41. Look at Jeremiah chapter 41, verses 4, on to verse 6. He kills uh, Gadaliah, okay? Look at verses 4 on to verse 6. And it came to pass the second day after he, Ishmael, had slain Gadaliah, and no man knew it. There came certain from Shechem and Shiloh, and from Samar Samaria, even fourscore men having their beards shaven and their clothes rent, and having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. And Ishmael the son of Nathaniah went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it came to pass, as he met them, he said unto them, Come to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. And of course it was a ruse. He was pretending to be weak, while all the while he was doing much evil. Good example of that. Going for it, oh, I'm, here I am, and you know, Ishmael crying. <laughs> Come to Gedaliah. He turns on him. Keep reading. But see, that false front, that false front, as many do, you got to really beware, brethren. Because when we come across those who seemingly have disabilities, but yet when you see them, they go, their actions as they go forward become more increasingly evil and evil against the scriptures. Then when you mention it to them, what do they do? They set a way mark for you here to keep in your mind. Hey, remember, I have this. I, this is wrong with me. That's like, oh, 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 I'm so, oh, 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 oh. And hide behind this. Like I've told you many times before in the past, every single time, every single time, what do you do? <clears throat> they shoot themselves in the foot. Every single time. See, there are a lot of people out there who say, you know, well, Paul named people. Yes, he sure, he sure did. And there's a time and place for that. Yes, there is. But you have to remember, brethren, the devils, these coadjutors, what they want to do is they want to distract you from seeking truth and have you turn away from going after the truth to go after them. Not after them, but to, because see, they distract you and they take you away from following truth so you can listen to them. And onto these devils, any publicity to detract you from seeking truth onto them, any publicity is good publicity, whether it be good or whether it be evil, whether it's you who have been duped to make an attack video against so-and-so, for them to do it back to you, then back and forth, back and forth. They've won. See, they've, they've achieved their objective in distracting you. And there are those out there who are not too bright about it. Okay? Not too bright. Okay? And you got to remember, most of the times these people are not following their own accord. They're listening to uh, higher-ups, usually. Jesuits. Okay? Usually. Uh, but then again, there are some out there who are just... Plain old, filled with devils. And see, another telling thing about these people is onto them. <laughs> the whole world revolves around you, don't it? Yeah, a little guilty conscience there. Mm -hmm. The whole world revolves around them. They think everything that is being spoken is being spoken against them. I've seen this. Many a times, so have you. It's another telltale uh, sign. It's a very telltale sign. They think, you know, you can <laughs> do a video. 
<laughs> I was willing to let it all go. You, 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 be, you bore yourself naked. Okay, you did. Okay. You showed my email. Why, why didn't you show the email you sent me there, tough guy? Hmm? Yeah. Anyway. You really did shoot yourself in the foot. And what's more is, you know you did. You know you did. And you know that I knew that you shot yourself in the foot. And I was willing to like, Son, you you need to go away. <laughs> um, you're you're claiming things, and okay, and yes, I was for you before, but you're obviously, you're obviously not. Okay, you shot yourself in the foot. I was willing to let it go, but what happened? What happened? They go forward, and set a way mark of disability of uh, iniquity, uh, not iniquity. Well, yeah, but infirmity. And they go forward with just crazy satanic doctrine and fall back to that. Shot yourself in the foot. And then they go forward. And as I've seen, they go back to that way marker for you to remember, hey, I'm weak, I'm sickly, I'm this and that. And then, or there, I have a learning disability, I have this, I have that. Okay? The Lord can turn that into a strength for those of the brethren who are truly saved and born again, converted of the church of the living God. But see, our Lord would not have you to hide behind that. As there are those who do. And go forth doing that which is evil. That's what we're talking about. Because now go to John chapter two, uh, first John chapter two. Like I said, we're going to cover familiar territory here today. But brethren, the, the hour is late, and and just because remember December is coming, and onto the Catholic December is a really big month. I actually believe that you're going to see a lot of these devils start being active in uh, the month of December. Because remember, to the Catholics, December is, woo -hoo -hoo, is a very big... Because that's when their Jesus was born, on December 25th. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shh, shh. Okay? But like I said, I, I believe we're going to see a very big influx, at least from these coadjutors that are going to start coming... I'm ready for it, too, by the way, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, come on. But I do believe that these coadjutors kind of hanging back, aren't they, right now? You, I, kinda, I got this feeling they're going to be coming out in December with a lot of stuff. But, because that's important to the Catholic. John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. We have to be reminded of this. Things might seem docile at the moment, but brethren, don't let this ever slip from your head. Because why? Because if you do, there's going to be someone with a dagger waiting for you to fall so you can fall on it. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. That Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went on from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye, those who are saved of the church of the living God, have an unction from the Holy One, that seal until the day of redemption. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost. You know, the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you, the circumcision made without hands. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things, because you have God within you. Okay? And, lo and looking at verse 19, okay, if you started off going in one direction, and then all of a sudden... <laughs> You go, woo -hoo -hoo. I mean, come on, man. 
Going on, I mean, and this has been um, manifest in many people who many thought were saved, and then they get the light shined on them, and then they totally flip and go in the uh, against what they used to preach and teach. <laughs> uh, it's like, dude, <laughs> dude, <laughs> okay, what is it with you? <laughs> you know, I would have a lot more respect for someone if uh, if all this happens, and if at least they try to continue on the path that they originally were going on. But no, they they want to go off on another thing and go against all the stands that they used to take. <laughs> and then go to Galatians chapter two, verses four under verse five. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection. No! Not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you, false brethren. Brought in unawares. And of course, Jude, verses 3 and 4. Jude, verses 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before ordained, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, these free gracers, Ugh, disgusting, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. False brethren, men crept in unawares. Spy out our liberty. These fakes. Like I said, some of these will make themselves manifest right away. They'll come in, they'll, they'll use, hey, we like you. We love what you're doing. They'll even help you. Okay? Then they'll be with you for a little while, and then they'll retract or go away, and then they'll try to drop a dirty bomb. And see, the problem is uh, ones like that who only endure for not even a year, uh, they do it too soon. They do it to cause confusion, but see, as a dirty bomb with shrapnel, if it gets someone, it gets someone. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And all it costs them is themselves. See, but they're pawns to be used by the Vatican, by Satan. You know, the Jesuits and Roman Catholicism, that's all Satan and stuff, his church and his army and stuff like that, okay? But see, some of them will be, they'll, they'll blow off their bomb way too soon. And we people are like, huh? What, what? 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 It makes no sense. And hoping that a piece of shrapnel will take one and divert them. Okay? And praise the Lord when that fails. Because, you know, there's, they usually don't have a leg to stand on anyway. Then you got some that can come in for a while. But over time, one too many things will be it's like, uh. But we as a church of the living God, we are forgiving. We want to give these. We want to give people chances, and we be and we're like, okay, maybe he's going through something, or, and here's a legitimate one, babes. Yes, we. Hey, seriously, you and I. If you're not a babe, you gotta remember we were babes once too. I was a babe once too. Okay. You were a babe once too. If you're a babe, you're you're still a babe. Babes make mistakes. Babes will go off in weird areas. But see, if they are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, sooner or later, the Lord's going to wrangle them and boom, settle them. It's like, get your act together now. That could be resisted through pride on their part. But for babe, the learning experience that they go through, what I've seen, the Lord works really quickly. Unless they don't want to hear. Unless they have a way marker there that they're using as something to hide behind in order to go forward doing evil. 
and trying to hide it by lavishing many things. Sweet words, gifts. But all the while, they got something here where they're going forth doing that which is evil. But when, when a light shines on them, they twist it and they try to turn it back on you. And if that fails, what do they do? They go back to this way marker. I'm this. I'm that. Oh, boo-hoo is me. you got to watch out for these people, brethren. you got to watch out for these people. And then there are those who are successful, like the late Brother Alberto Rivera, a Jesuit, okay, who as a Jesuit was really good at what he did. He was, uh, he infiltrated many things. You could uh, get a hold of Brother Alberto Rivera's testimony. Um, unfortunately, the only way you can get it, it is something associated with Chick Publications. Okay, uh, you can get it off of eBay or whatnot, or even Amazon or whatnot. But uh, I do recommend people that they they get thank you, pardon, that they get Alberto Rivera's testimony because very revealing. But he was an infiltrator. He was a very good infiltrator. There are those who will infiltrate. And a very successful infiltrator is one who will come in and yet will be able to endure and abide for a time. While all the while showing little signs like, wait a second. But then again, like I said, they'll take that, <laughs> that spotlight. Once that spotlight is on them, they have a way marker that they go back to. Okay. Psalm 55. Verses 12 on to verse 15. And see, what hurts is when these people, through whatever means, whatever they have a way marker, I'm this, that, and the other thing, or they lavish attention or affection or even gifts upon you, and you have true, you think true fellowship, and you count them as a friend. But then what happens? Verse 12 on to verse 15 in Psalm 55. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Like these coadjutors here on YouTube and other platforms. You know, uh, those who, for example, here on YouTube who hate me, when they come out and say stuff, you know, which are probably going to start up in December. <laughs> um, when they do that stuff, it's like no skin off my backside. It's like whatever. That's, you know, you'd kill me if you could. I know you would. Okay, whatever. Then would I have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. Someone who is an effective infiltrator will do exactly that. They'll get in and they'll endure for a while, whatever short the time is. And you've got to be on your guard against that, brethren. Because you'll have exactly that. We took sweet counsel together. Verse 14. And walked onto the house of God in company. And these are the ones who can betray you. Sweet words. Affection. A way marker. I have a disability. I have an infirmity. I could never hurt a fly. Look at me, I'm, I'm so pathetic. I, 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 I have a mental disability. <laughs> what does David say about this? Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick, that means alive, into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. And time is always the best thing to, to utilize for these people to, shh, <laughs> they do every time, man. They shoot themselves in the foot. They shoot themselves in the foot. I keep telling you that. I keep telling you that. Look for yourself. Sooner or later, sooner or later, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. They do every single time. Every single time. And when that happens, there's no denying it. Is there? But on the subject of betrayal, 
Oh, I think you know where we're going next. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verse 60. On the verse 71. John chapter 6, verse 60, on to verse 71. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, you, you know, he was debunking the, uh, <laughs> the Eucharist. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Yeah, because, like I said, the, these people, these infiltrators, one of their big things that they have, the whole world revolves around them. See, the whole world revolves around them. They think everything you say or do is about them. You talk about ego. You talk about pride. Now, all the while, the way marker here, remember, I'm weak I have a disability, I have this, that, and the other thing, but yet the whole world revolves around me. Yeah. Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Oh, you disgusting Catholics. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. Come on, read it out loud with me. Ready? The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew and he knows who are his. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You know, brother, sister, you can mess up. You can get diverted. You can go into some really crazy areas. You have God living within you. This dispensation sealed unto the day of redemption when you come unto our Lord. Broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name. Uh -huh and that he may save you, um, you're sealed until the day of redemption. You can make a real big mess of things there, brother, sister. But you have to be like Shimon Peter. And then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Where are you going to go? Are you going to get away from God? You're saved, born again, converted, new creature in Christ Jesus, and you're in sin? The Lord lives in you. You ain't getting away from him. Where are you going to go? You're going to hide somewhere where he can't see you, huh? Where are you going to go? Verse 69. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Many have pondered, it's like, okay, Jesus knew, and they, they, they had that ridiculous apocryphal book, The Gospel of Judas. <laughs> Woohoo! If you have ever read that, and I don't recommend you do, that's crazy. And there are those nitwits out there, and I'm using that word charitably, who actually believe that to be true. You got some big problems. But there are those that ask, well, if Jesus, who is God our Father, 
He knew about Judas. Why did he allow him to stick around? Give us an example. That's what I always say. Did not Christ give us an example? Uh, we are to follow Paul today in this dispensation, um, the time of the Gentiles, as how to follow Christ because Paul followed Christ. He is our example. We cannot be like Christ in that we cannot be sinlessly perfect. It's impossible. And we can't do miracles like that and stuff like that, okay? Be careful when people talk to, uh, to you about imitating Jesus. But he did that, I believe, as an example to show that even him as God, who is our Father, those devils will be amongst us. And Judas Iscariot, he was with Jesus for what? About two, three years, right? Right, from the beginning. From the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was three years his ministry was. So Judas was there the whole time. But yet, he was a devil. Why did the Lord have allowed that? I believe for an example, also was prophesied, but to show us that there are those who are amongst us who are not of us. And they can dwell amongst us for a long time. But sooner or later, they shoot themselves in the foot. John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verses 21 under verse 27. When Jesus, uh, John 13, verses 21 under verse 27. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was, was leaning on Jesus, ah, now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Shimon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. Then he then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop, S-O-P, son of perdition. When I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. I've covered this in other videos before. If I can remember, I'll link it in the description box. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest too quickly. And Psalm 41, Psalm 41, you know, our Lord said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me, in verse 21. Go to Psalm 41. Psalm 41, we want verses 7 unto verse 9. Psalm 41, verses 7 unto verse 9. All they that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, being the Jews. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast to him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. He was sick. He had a devil, which they said of God, manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God the Father. They said that of God the Father. He had a devil. Wow. That's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, by the way. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. And the he mention of the heel there is very significant. Go all the way to the beginning. Genesis chapter 3, which we will be looking at a, a little later. 
The heel reference is very important. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He's talking unto the serpent who is Satan. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Satan bruises his heel. And he says here in verse 9 in Psalm 41, Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Verses 47 on to verse 50. We haven't even gotten to the meat of what we are supposed to get to today. Just so you know. Matthew chapter 26, verses 47 on to verse 50. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold fast. Hold, hold your place right there. Proverbs 27, one verse, verse 6. Proverbs 27. We're, we're going to look at that at Luke. Don't worry. But prophecy, remember. So many scriptures were fulfilled by our Lord Jesus Christ. You are, and I'm saying this with much charity, you are a moron if you deny that Jesus is the Christ. Okay? Um, Proverbs 27, verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Of course, Luke chapter 22, which we, you probably thought we were going to straightway. Luke 22, come on fingers, work with me, not against me. Thank you very kindly. Luke 22, verse 48. Uh, let's, let's refresh our memory in uh, Matthew chapter 26. Verse 48. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. Let's read verse 49. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Luke 22, verse 48. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Verse 50 in Matthew chapter 26. Look at this. And Jesus said unto him, Who? Judas. Friend, wherefore art thou come? Friend. Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Friend. There is a friend who sticketh closer than a brother. And I praise the Lord that the Lord has brought together into my life a man who is, who is a blessing unto us my best friend, our dearly beloved brother Alexander Hartley. My best friend I've ever had in my life, besides, of course, Lord Jesus and my wife, of course. But, um, and he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And I trust him with my life. I trust him with my wife's life. But there are those, just like with Judas, friend, Wherefore comest thou? Or Judas. Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss. Today is the 23rd. Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. We're going to have a little expository here. 
I told you, we, we, we didn't get into the main meat of things. Today is the 23rd. Have you read the 23rd proverb today? Why not? You're too busy, huh? Shh, silence. Proverbs chapter 23. We're going to have a little expository here. Proverbs chapter 23. Follow me along in the scriptures, please. Okay? I am, as you just saw, I'm using two sets of scriptures. Prover uh, Proverbs 23. We're only going to read up to verse 9. Okay? But we are going to do some expository along the way. Proverbs 23, verse 1. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler... Consider diligently what is before thee. Second Corinthians chapter 4. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this world. You see that? It's a little g. Who is the little g God of this world? Lucifer, Satan, the serpent, the dragon, Leviathan, Satan. He is the little G God of this world, given unto him for judgment against this world. Okay? Now, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. What does Satan offer you? We'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. Ephesians chapter 2, 1 verse. Verse 2. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh. Because you've got to remember, Satan is all about flesh, just like Catholics are all about flesh. Okay? They're all about flesh. Like we started in Psalm 10. Okay? The, sh the pride of their countenance, flesh. They're all about flesh. They're going to do what they're going to do no matter how the Lord advises them. They're going to do what they're going to do. And they're going to hide behind way markers. They're going to do yeah, but, yeah, but. Not going to hearken to wise counsel. But they're going to do what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. That's what you and I of the Church of the Living God once were. We're saved sinners. They're lost sinners. See, it's a struggle between spirit and flesh. Okay? And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Okay? And let's read verse 2 because I read the long verse there. Okay? Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. I'm supposed to read verse 2, I read verse 3, but hey, more help, right? But see, the prince of the power of the air. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And as we saw in verse 3, what does Satan offer you? Lusts of the flesh and of the mind. So you can puff yourself up in your own wisdoms, in your own conceit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But of course now, Ephesians 6, 10... On to verse 13. How do you combat this? 
Because see, it says here, when thou sittest to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And what does Satan offer you? The desires and lusts of the flesh and of the mind. Okay? The, sh the pride of their countenance. Okay? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 on to verse 13. How do you fight this? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Rulers of the darkness of this world? Rulers. This says ruler, singular. That says plural. But see, it's the pyramid effect. Remember the pyramid effect that I told you about? Okay? It starts from the top and works its way down. And then the prophets work from the bottom and overflow the top of the pyramid. Okay? Okay? But see, those who are evil all follow basically one head. Their father, the devil. For when you wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on to you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, of course we have to go there. Verses 3 on verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 3 on verse 6. Though, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. See, because remember, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. What does Satan offer as the ruler of this world? The pleasures of the flesh and of the mind. And these devils, they revel in flesh, you know, because they worship the skin suit, the, the uh, little cookie. But of the mind. But of the mind. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 under verse 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, Casting down imaginations, desires of the mind, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience to Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So, our weapons are not carnal, fleshly what our weapon is yeah you were probably thinking while we were in Ephesians chapter 6 why didn't you read verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God this is how we wage our warfare but see there are those out there who will set up way markers to hide behind they're all about flesh Pride of their countenance, the pride of their countenance, okay? The pride of their flesh and the desires of the mind. When thou sittest to eat with the ruler, why are you sitting to eat with the ruler anyway? You can't be partaker at the Lord's table and the table of devils, remember? Well, you think I forgot about that, right? Yeah. Consider diligently what is before thee. And put a knife to thy throat, verse 2, if thou be a man given to appetite. Proverbs 24. Just two verses. Proverbs 24. Verses 1 and 2. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. You cannot have fellowship with devils. Okay? Read 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay? You cannot have you cannot be partakers of the Lord table, Lord's table, and the table of devils. <laughs> I just thought of you smiling. 
<laughs> For their heart studieth destruction of the mind, lust of the mind, pleasures of the mind, and their lips talk of mischief. And under their tongue is uh, mischief and vanity. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Be not desirous of his dainties. For they are deceitful meat. You're going to love this. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Be not desirous of his dainties. Oh, yeah. His dainties. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Serpent, who is Satan, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Read Ezekiel chapter 28. Satan is a created being. Okay? Okay? And he, Satan, said unto the woman, Eve, this is, this, is what it's, this is what they do. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto, unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall ye touch it, which he did not say, lest ye die. You just look across the page to verse 17 in uh, Genesis chapter 2. Where did God say, uh, neither shall ye touch it? Talked about that at length many times before. Let's continue, okay? And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. What does Satan offer you? Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, disobey God, then your eyes shall be open. And here it is. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Covered that before in a video before. I can remember these things. I'll put them in the description box, okay? So Satan, in disobedience to God, is offering you to have your eyes open. But see, what it costs you is disobeying God and going against God. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Verse 4, and of course, Proverbs 23. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. 1 Timothy chapter 6 again. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Not the concordance. 1 <laughs> Timothy chapter 6. Verses 9 and 10. Of course. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish, foolish is the result of being a fool who says in his heart there is no God. To do things foolish or to do things foolishly is doing things as if there is no God, no consequence, no accountability. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Proverbs 3 now. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. I'm going to do a little reading here. Hope you can handle this. Proverbs 3. Uh, let's, let's refresh our memory. Verse 4. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Proverbs 3. Verses 5 on to verse 17. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. 
Trust in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. All of them. Not just the ways you choose. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path, thy paths. Excuse me. Be not wise in thine own conceit. Ah, be not wise in thine own eyes. Beg your pardon. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Are you wise in your own eyes? Huh? You know better? You're not going to listen to godly counsel? You're not going to listen to when people warn you about things it's like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. Hey, maybe you shouldn't go in that direction. Hey, uh, we've gone through the scriptures. What? How many times have you been admonished by godly counsel, but yet you're wise in your own eyes? You just had to do it, right? Yeah. If you fear the Lord and depart from evil, what will come? It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Now see, our instruction in righteousness, it's a little bit deeper than just tangibles, okay? Thy substance, yourself, with the first fruits of, thou, of all thine increase, whatever the Lord increases in, on you, in you, share it with others. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the loveth, who, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son, in whom he delighteth. And of course, our Lord says in Revelation, whom I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be, zeal there, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, and the man that getteth understanding, departing from evil. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. If you have the fear of the Lord, and you have departing, or you're departing from evil, which is the fear of the Lord is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Verse 5 in Proverbs 23. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Psalm 49. Psalm, what not Joe, Brad? Psalm 49. Verses 6. On the verse 14. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. You're a Christian. I'm a billionaire. You're a Christian. Look at all the land and stuff I got. You're of the church of the living God. Having food and raiment, therefore, let us be there with content. See the difference? None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give a ransom for or nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth, ceaseth forever. And how were we how were we redeemed? By the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross. That was the price of our redemption, the blood of Jesus Christ who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 
that he should still live forever and not see corruption. Prophecy right there. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool, and the brutish, brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. You're going to die. There's no discharge from that war. We all have one common denominator. We're all going to die. Where are you going to go? That's the question. You need to figure that one out yourself. Where are you going to go? Who are you trusting on? Yourself, the flesh, the devil, or our Lord Jesus Christ? That he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That he shed his blood for you on the cross to cleanse away sin. And that you come to him broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow because it's your fault that he did that. And fear him because if you don't, he can send you to hell justly. And call upon his name. And may he save you. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. <laughs> they call denominations after their own names, huh? Calvinist, Lutherans, Mennonites. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. This, their way, is their folly. Yet their posterity approve their saying, Shilah. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. <laughs> Death shall feed on them. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. Very stern warning right there, but oh, Psalm 73. There's two verses here. Verses 18 and 19. God, remember, those, and remember, when it comes to riches, yes, it's, it, it curtails that. But it's more than just that. Okay? You can have very little money, but all your bills paid, and yet have tons of stuff. Wealth in other ways other than money. You got to remember that. And when riches increase, they drown themselves in many hurt, foolish and hurtful lusts. When you're wealthy, not just get, get out of your mind, just mammon. It could be wealth of books, wealth of property, wealth of friends, wealth of whatever. Psalm 73, verses 18 and 19. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. Yeah, yeah, you millionaire Christian. Yeah, what are you going to do when the banks go belly up? <laughs> now, wilt thou set thine eyes, uh, Proverbs 23, wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Verses 6 and 7. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. And if your eye be single, where is your eye focused? Mm -hmm. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. Luke chapter 4, oh, of course, of course, of course. Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4. There are those out there who will lavish on you tangible affections. They will give, they will give, but they'll hold it over your head when the time comes. It's like, hey, I gave you this, so you owe me. 
I've done this for you. So that means I have sway over you. I've run into that one. I've given you thousands of dollars. Yeah? Trying to hold that over my head, are you? Hmm. Eat not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Luke 4. 1 on the verse 13. Yeah, we're going through it again. Now remember, what is Satan tempting here? God cannot be tempted to do evil. The skin suit, the flesh, is being tempted here. Jesus being full of the and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Satisfy the belly, flesh. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil taketh him, take the devil and the devil, beg your pardon, taking him up into a high mountain, shooed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Appealing to the flesh again. Pride. Look at this. Doesn't all this flesh look beautiful? And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and all the glory of them, the glory of man, the glory of flesh. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. What's the catch, though? If thou, therefore, wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Again, tempting the flesh, the skin suit that you Catholics love so much, that you devils love so much. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, again, the temptation of the flesh, but look what he does. Quote scripture. Thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his, his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou, sh thou dash thy foot against the so a stone. Again, the temptation to the flesh. That's the only way Jesus could be tempted. Because the word was made flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God manifests in the flesh. The only way the temptations here are to the flesh. Okay? And look what our Lord says. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Because God cannot be tempted to do evil. The temptation there was all Eat not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. <laughs> And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Yeah. Yeah. And verse 7 in uh, Proverbs 23, For as he thinketh in his heart, Oh, you know where we're going, don't you? As he thinketh in his heart, you, you ought to know where we're going. I'm not going to tell you yet. So we get there. And I'm going to read the very first verse. You ought to know where we're headed. Okay, if you do not, this will give it away. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Okay, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Sorry about not that not telling you. You ought to have known. But if if you didn't know, like I said, it's Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. You could have paused it and caught up. Sorry. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine hearts, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He thinks he's God. All this will I give you. Fall down and worship me. Yet, thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 on to verse 24. And Melchizedek, king of Salem. Salem is peace. This is a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the way, God our Father. Brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. So Melchizedek came and blessed Abram, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. So we see tithes, Abraham giving tithes to the king of Salem. Salem, shalom, peace. Okay? And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, the flesh, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor, the possessor of heaven and earth. Those of you of the church of the living God who have given unto us, the Lord through you as, as providing for us. The Lord through you. Okay? The Lord through you. My wife and I, we pray unto the Lord. When we have a need, the Lord provides it. Okay? We go to the Lord. We ask Him. You know, Lord, what do you want us to do? Do you want me to keep doing this? He keeps saying yes. The Lord through you, brethren. Keep us here. It's you. The Lord through you. Okay? The Lord through you. Okay? So, we have lifted up our hands unto the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. And through you, Church of the Living God, he has responded. Praise the Lord. Verse 23. Then I will not take from a thread even to a shoe last year. And that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Holding it over your head. Look at what I've done for you. You owe me because I've done this for you. Mm-hmm. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Yeah. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men with, with, which went with me, a near as coal and memory. Let them take their portion. Of course, seen to, from where it was coming, the king of Sodom. It's all about flesh. 
this will I give you, give thee. Fall down and worship me, all will be thine. In Matthew chapter 6, Paul in Romans thanks so many people. And there are many people that I thank, um, that I am very thankful for. But we have to remember Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 under verse 4. Take heed that ye do not take do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. This is really good instruction in righteousness. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, thine alms, excuse me, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. See, that's why for those of you brethren who help us, I, you know who you are. We pray for you and thank you to all of you. We can't name you publicly. Why? Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Our praise? Or do you want the praise of God? But when thou doest alms, <laughs> let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Left hand, right hand. Spirit, Flesh, sheep, goats. Do you get it? Let not thy left hand, flesh, goats, no, not, let not thy left hand, okay, flesh, goats, know what thy right hand, sheep, spirit, do it. Do you get it? that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. That openly, whether it be unto you, or in a provision, spiritual fruit, treasures in heaven, whatever it may be. Go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Let's read verses 6 and 7 again in Proverbs 23. Eat, not, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Why? For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. He thinks he's God. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. John chapter 5, verses 41 on to verse 47. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Can you? How can ye believe? How can ye believe? Which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. You want something to roll around in your head for a day. You roll that verse around in your head. How can ye believe? which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Do not think I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, talking about the scriptures, how shall ye believe my words? Hmm? Are you 
receiving honor of, of men? Are you doing what you do to be seen of men? Verse 8 in Proverbs 23. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. <laughs> Verses 21 unto verse 23. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Lose thy sweet words. Okay? But remember, verse 7, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. All these things will I give you, if you just worship me, so it's all be yours. Proverbs 7, verses 21 and verse 23. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Mm. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool who says in his heart there is no God, to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hence, what happens when we fall for infiltrators, when they get in and they betray us, you know the saying, you fool me once, shame on you. You fool me uh, twice, shame on me. There's some truth to that. But with her much fair speech, sweet words, she caused him to yield. Whether it be by lavishing things upon you, like this harlot does in Proverbs 7, talking about Mystery Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism, you know, the mother of harlots, the Jesuits, her army, okay? But with much fair speech, sweet of tongue, but under that tongue, it's mischief, vanity. They give you the world, but you're going to vomit it all up. And what does Satan give you? What is Satan offering you? Oh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind? Because that's what Satan is all about. That's what all his coadjutors are about. That's what all these devils are about. Flesh. Some of them could put on a really good show. Uh, Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13, verses 1 on verse 3. Now, the morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Verse 8 in Proverbs 23. Uh, Proverbs 13, verses 1 and 3. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. But the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Oh, oh beg your pardon. Uh, Proverbs 9, 7 and 10, on to verse 10. Hmm. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. Yeah. Yeah. When someone doesn't want to hear, when someone doesn't want to listen, they ask you for advice. 
Godly counsel. Let's go through the scriptures. Give them scriptures and advice. Godly counsel. You know. And you find out that they didn't take heed to the warning of scripture. They didn't take any counsel or advice. They just went ahead. They had to because they had this, that, the other, or they had a way marker there that they're hiding behind. They just had to do that. And if you're honest with yourself, we are all guilty of that. Aren't we? The Lord is like, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Then you do it. Then you reap what you sow. And it's like, oh, boo-hoo-hoo for you. You get what you deserve. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. And he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Why? Because they've made their choice. And someone who is headstrong and pride, kind of like Paul, he was determined to go to Jerusalem, even though the Lord, uh, twice, and then through the brethren. So three times, Paul was admonished, hey, maybe you shouldn't go to Jerusalem. What did Paul do? I'm going to Jerusalem. My, my heart is made up. Okay? Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, wisdom, fear the Lord, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding, departing from evil. Departing from evil. Okay? Now, verse 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Why? For he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Proverbs 26. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Proverbs 26, verses 1, verse 12. As snow in summer, out of place, as rain in harvest, also out of place, so honor is not seemingly for fool. Uh, but hold your place here. Hold your place. You are the church of the living God. You ought to know this. But if you do not, I keep telling you, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Okay? Uh, there are two places, uh, Psalm 14 or Psalm 53. Go to Psalm 53. You want a definition of what a fool actually is according to Scripture? Uh, Webster is good, but not infallible. Okay? There's been many occasions where Mr. Uh, Webster botched it. Okay? But... You want to know what a fool is? Very quickly. Psalm 53, verse 1. The scriptural definition of a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's what a fool is, according to scripture. Psalm 53, verse 1. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Okay, you can also read that. And what is it, Psalm 14? I believe it is. Yes. Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Okay? Go back to Proverbs 26. So, when it says, as snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse, causeless, shall not come. You reap what you sow. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, <laughs> and a rod for the fool's back. 
Are you looking? Don't look at me. Are you looking at verse 4? See, like I said at the beginning, these devils want to detract you away from the truth and have your attention drawn onto them. And whether it be good for them or evil, any publicity is good publicity. If they can distract you and take you away to pay a, even a smidge of attention to them, they have succeeded. Victory unto these devils is very broad. Wow, narrow is the way. Answer a fool, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Our weapons are not carnal. We are not supposed to fight like they do. But so often we do, don't we? I know there's a time and a place for everything. I know that. I know that. But what separates us from them? A lot of people can profess things, confess things, you know, say words. You know, a lot of people, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. I mean, you can say anything you want all day. You shall know them by their fruits. Yeah. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Lest thou be like, lest thou also be like unto him. We are not supposed to fight like they do. And when you see those of the church of the living God supposedly fighting like they do. And hey, I'm guilty of it too. I've done it too. The Lord has rebuked me heavily, chastened me heavily, 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 heavily. Okay? When I let my pride get the best of me, when I let my ego, my temper get the best of me, all kinds of things go haywire. Okay? We're not supposed to fight like that. We're not supposed to be like them. Okay? Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. See, if they can distract you, whether it be good, whether it be evil, if they can distract you from the truth, they won. They can get you angry. They've won. To them. You know, say, ha, 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 ha. I got you to pay attention to me. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Verse 6. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. Yeah. Immobilize you and poison you. The legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. Like these guys on these platforms, YouTube and stuff like that, who can't teach, all they can do is attack. I mean, <laughs> there are some who are devils, but they, they at least attempt to do something with Scripture. It's poorly done, but there are some out there that don't even attempt. All they do is smile and just make attack videos. That's all they can do. They can't teach. They're, they're incapable. They're incapable. Because why? A parable, uh, the legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. You know? <laughs> as he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. And, and what is, what was the very first verse? As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. Verse 9. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is the parable in the mouth of fools. A drunkard who is drunk, incapacitated, sees something where uh, probably a thorn is evident, but yet still goes for it because they're drunk. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool who says in his heart there is no God and rewardeth the transgressors who break the law. Transgression is what? The breaking of the law. 
as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool to his folly. And on this verse, on this verse, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, I want you to denote something here. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Dogs. Verse 11 in Proverbs 26. As a dog returneth to his vomit. Male. Male. Dog. Male. As a dog returneth to his vomit. So a fool returneth to his folly. Matthew chapter 7 verse 6. Give not that which is holy other unto dogs. Neither cast your pearls, the pearl of great price, before swine. Second Pedro. Second Peter chapter 2, right? Yeah. Second Peter. Second Peter 2.22. 2 <laughs> Peter 2. Verse 22. Come on. Before I go from Hebrews to Revelation. There we go. Okay. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his vomit again, as we have just read in Proverbs 26. Okay? As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. And I just lost my place in Matthew chapter 7. Beg your pardon, brethren. <laughs> Bear with me. Bear with your servant. Okay? Okay? But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog has returned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Her. Matthew 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, male, neither cast your pearls before swine, female, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Careful whom you're giving truth to. And verse 12 in Proverbs 26. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Wise in their own conceit. Someone, uh, this has happened before, people will come to me through email. And ask, you know, what, Brad, what, can you give me some advice on something like this? And what do I do? What do we do? We go to the scriptures. We look in the scriptures. You know that. Those of you who have come to me, uh, whether by telephone or email or Skype, what do we do? We go into the scriptures. Okay. We seek godly counsel through the scriptures. Okay. We find answers, Lord willing, as he, as he um, guides then come to find out that it's like, okay, you we went through the scriptures together, but you went ahead and did it anyway. And then, then they say, well, I just had to. I, I had to. I had to get I had to say something. I couldn't just let it lie. We're supposed to say stuff. Or I or I I was, you know, I was, you know, remember, I'm weak. I, I have an ailment. I have a, 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 a disability. I have this or that. I had to do this. I, but you had, you, you can't, we, we went through the scriptures. You agreed that you're right. I shouldn't, but yet you did it anyway. It's like, why do you waste my time? Why are you wasting your time? Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 42. 
Jeremiah chapter 42. As we already addressed, Nebuchadnezzar came, whooped the snot out of Jerusalem, put Gedaliah in charge, Ishmael came, killed him. And then some guys ran off Ishmael. And now these guys are without Gedaliah and they're terrified of Nebuchadnezzar coming down and whooping the snot out of them. They were already whooped. But like I said, Nebuchadnezzar established Gedaliah, uh, Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, came and killed them. And then Johanan and Kara and all these guys run him off. And now they're scared. They have their own idea of what they want to do. But check this out. Jeremiah 42, verses 1 and verse 6. That was the backstory. Then all the captains of the forces and Johanan the son of Kera and Jezniah the son of Hoshiah and all the people from the least even unto the greatest came near and said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let we beseech thee our supplication be accepted before thee. And pray for us unto the Lord thy God, even for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us. That the Lord thy God may shew us the way wherein we may walk, and the thing that we may do. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to the, your words. And it, shall, and it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord will answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. Now, then said they to Jeremiah, The Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not even according to all things for the which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Whatever it is, go to the Lord. Tell us what he says and we'll do it. Really. Go to Numbers. Go to Numbers 20. Go to Numbers chapter 23. I'm going to show you an example of what we're getting at here. Backstory. Balak and Balaam. Balak, king of Moab, sees Israel coming. He's a scared. He's like, wow, they're going to whoop my rear end. So he inquires, goes to Balaam, the prophet of for hire. Okay? Most of us all know about Balaam. Okay? He was rebuked by the dumb ass. Okay? He was rebuked by an ass. A female ass that spake with a man's voice. Okay? But yeah, he was a prophet for hire. Okay? He also taught the children of Israel to commit fornication through the women of Moab, okay? I've covered that before in other videos. But Balak sees Israel. He's like, oh, wow, I got to get Balaam, who's in touch with the Lord, to curse Israel. Numbers chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 10. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and, Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet me. And whatsoever he sheweth me, I will tell thee. And he went to an high place. And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab, 
And he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, hath brought me from Aram, out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Joah, of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the deaths of the righteous and let my last end be like his. So, Balak sent on the Balaam to curse Israel. Obviously, that wasn't happening. He, he offered seven bullocks and seven altars. He did what he was told to do. He, he put that out there, hoping that God would honor what he wanted to have done. God's like, no, <laughs> of course, of course not. Now, let's read verses 11 on to verse 10. Verses 1 on to verse 10, that's the first supplication that Balak inquired of the Lord to Balaam. Okay? Didn't work out well. So, verses 11 on to verse 13. And Balak said unto Balaam, what, what hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. I went to you for you to tell me what I wanted to hear. I went to you so you could tell me what I want, what I think God should tell me to do. You get it? And he answered, verse 12, and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? Amen. This is coming from Balaam of all people. And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee with me unto another place, from whence thou mayest see them. Thou shalt see but the utmost part of them, and shalt not see them all, and curse me them from thence. So he's like, okay, okay, here, let me take you up a little higher so you can, like, like we saw, trying to sway the prophet as if the prophet were the one who could do anything. See? And then you would read that he goes ahead and does the same thing. He offers seven bullocks and seven all on seven bullocks and seven rams on seven altars. Again, he does it twice. Does it twice. It's like, okay, let me let me move up here a little higher to a different ground, and now let's try to worm God over so God would be pleased to do what I want him to do for me. Picking up now from verses 19 on to verse 24. And after the second time that, you know, he goes and does all this, okay? This was the second time that Balak goes and does all this stuff on the altar, trying to get God to see it his way. Here's what Balaam answers, verses 19 on to verse 24. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed. I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Oh, we could go off in so many directions in that. You know, he'll descend from heaven with a shout, okay? Uh, Song of Solomon's, uh, you know, there is no spot in thee. Oh, so beautiful, we can go off on that. Different time, okay? Okay. And the shout of a king is, yeah, again, like I said, verse 21, you can go off in so many directions on that. But verse 22, okay? God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, 
The people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. Now, that's twice. God said on, uh, through Balaam unto Balak, uh, <laughs> you don't, don't get it. Israel is not cursed. Okay, you can, you can jump up and down all day. You're not going to sway me. But you got to appreciate Balak here. Now let's read verses 25 on to verse 30. Third time. Yes. Okay. First time God shot it down. Oh, no, it's not happening. Second time. Seven bullocks and seven altars and stuff like that. Didn't do it. Verses 25 on to verse 30. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I thee, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that I must do. And Balak said unto Balaam, <laughs> This is Balak. He, he, he was really desperate. And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure it will please God that thou mayest curse me them from thence. So here, they went there first. It's like, okay, that didn't work. Okay, let's hear it. Let's go up here, get the altar, the offerings. Okay, let's, here, let's try this. Didn't work. Let's, come on, let's go up even higher. Let's try this. And Balak brought Balaam up onto the top of Peor that looked toward Jeshma. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and ram on every altar. <laughs> and, and let's read... Let's read verses... Oh... Let's, let's read a little bit in ver, uh, chapter 24 here. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel... In other words, Balaam figured it out. It's like, okay, dude, you've, you've tried this, you've tried this. Okay, yeah, I get it. You're, you're in a pickle and you're really trying. If Balak, Balak, unless Balaam would have said what he was about to say, he probably would have gone for fourth, fifth, sixth time, okay, trying to get God to see it his way. In other words, inquiring of the Lord in a false pretense, Ah, already having their minds, his mind made up, wanting God to bless their endeavors. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments. But he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, he has said, which heard the words of God, which saw the visions of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Hmm. And we'll stop at verse 5. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. Then we would continue to read, and we find that Balak said, I would have given you anything if you would have just cursed them for me. But Balaam, even though he was a false prophet, God used him, yes he did, um, for judgment. Balaam was like, look, dude, the Lord told me to tell you this. You can give as many offerings and move me up higher and higher and higher and higher. It's not going to change God's mind. See, the king of Moab, Balak, was trying to win over God by going up higher, 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 giving offerings and doing these things, trying to get God to see it there his way. Then when we go back to um, Jeremiah chapter 42, okay, 
Jeremiah chapter 42, we read in verses 1 on to verse 16, uh, verse 6, the children of Israel went to Jeremiah, sorry, and verses 5 and 6. Then said they to Jeremiah, then they said to Jeremiah, excuse me, the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not even, even according to all things for the which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we will, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Okay, there it is. They said, "Hey, hey, whatever the Lord says, we'll do." Now go to verses sixteen, on to verse twenty. In Jeremiah 42, verses 16 on to verse 20. Then it came to pass that the sword which ye feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine whereof ye were afraid shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there ye shall die. See, um, let's continue. So shall it be with all the men that seek their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. And none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. Well, didn't, they just, we, didn't we just read that? It's like whatever the Lord says, we'll do. But the Lord's saying, it's like when you go down to Egypt, this is what's going to happen to you. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as mine anger and my fury hath been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you when ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be an excretion, and an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. The Lord has said concerning you, O ye remnant of Judah, go ye not into Egypt. Lord has said, Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. Hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. Paul, uh, maybe you shouldn't go to Jerusalem. He went anyway. Hey, you know, may, maybe you shouldn't go that direction. You go anyway. Verse 20. For ye dissembled in your hearts. When ye sent me unto the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us unto the Lord our God, and according unto all that the Lord our God shall say, so declare unto us, and we will do it. They dissembled in their hearts. What does that mean? They already knew what they were doing, regardless what the Lord had said anything. Kind of like why we looked at what Balak. Okay? They were going to see if the Lord were going to Hopefully, bless what they wanted to do. They had no intention of obeying the Lord. If the Lord had said, go ahead and go to Egypt, then they would have been, praise the Lord! Because that's what they wanted to do. They went to Jeremiah in hopes that the Lord will bless what they want to do. But doesn't happen that way, cousin. See, you need to be in line with the Lord's will for your life. Not your, when your desires are what are according to scripture, then the Lord will bless those. When your desires are what are his desires according to scripture. But when they go against what the Lord desires and you go to him to bless what you want to do and it's not what he wants for you, you're going to run into problems, aren't you? They never intended on listening. Just hoping that the Lord would bless their endeavor. Prove it to you. Jeremiah chapter 43, verses 1 on to verse 7. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them even all these words, and they said, whatever it is we're going to do. They never intended to do that, no matter what. Then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshia, and Johanan, the son of Kera, and all the proud men. 
hold your place there and go back to Psalm 10. Go back to Psalm 10. Go back to Psalm 10. Verse 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. Oh, they did! God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan, the son of Kera, and all the proud men, saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. Why did they even waste their time? Why did they even waste Jeremiah's time? But Baruch, the son of Neriah, setteth thee on against us to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. So Johanan, the son of Kera, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. But Johanan, the son of Kera, and all the captains of the forces, took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations, whither they had been driven, to dwell in the land of Judah, even men and women and children, and the king's daughters, and every person that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gadaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neriah. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus came they even to Tephanes. We as a church of the living God, we, we, we all sin. We all sin. And we as a church of the living God are not always obedient unto what the Lord says. And see, when we disobey what our Lord wants for us, for our lives, he rebukes and chastens us heavily. Or he let us have what we want and it turns out to be ill for us. We, we, we reap what we sow. And there are those out there who have absolutely no desire whatsoever of adhering to the principles, to the truth of Scripture, but will go to somebody to ask, you know, what, what does the Scripture say on that? You give it to them and they have no desire. They have no desire. There are those out there whose heart is fully set in them to do evil, who are infiltrators, but will hide behind legitimate circumstances, legitimate things, but use those as a crutch to go forward with evil. And then when a light is shined on them, they fall back and hide behind. Oh, we need to be aware of these things, brethren. The time is getting so short. We don't got time for things like these. And you know, like I said, <laughs> there are people out there who have disabilities. God can use disabilities in people, so-called disabilities. Okay? Um, my, uh, my best friend, he has uh, a form of autism. And it makes, it, and the Lord uses that in a an analytical sense and his analytical approach to scripture is wonderful okay absolutely but then again there are those out there who have a disability will hide behind that to go and promote satanic doctrine like easy believism like the guy from australia who uses his disability 
to his advantage to deceive and to do evil. To garner sympathy. Who has no desire of ever following the Lord truly as he is. And there are those out there who are frail, weak, sickly. And the whole world revolves around them. But see again, that way marker. See, they establish that for all of you to see. Then they go forth doing evil. And then when called out, they fall back to that. Beware of these people, brethren. Beware of them. Beware of them. And like I said, every single time, it just takes time. Every single time, those who are false will shoot themselves in the foot. Every single time it happens like that. It takes time. But it happens like that. They will shoot themselves in the foot. That's going to be it for this video. Like I said, this, praise the Lord, altered has altered my entire day. <laughs> I, I purposely didn't do things I normally do in mornings because this is what the Lord wanted me to speak on. Be wary of dark implants, brethren. It's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much to all of you at the Church of the Living God. We love you so much. Thank you for everything. All of you, you know who you are. Please keep us in your prayers um, as my wife and I go forward. Please keep each other in prayer. Please keep our brethren and other nations in prayer. And consider these things, brethren. It's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. And like I said, I don't know what's going to happen for the remainder of this week. This day is Tuesday. We had hoped that our brother, our best friend, were to join us this week. We don't know if that's going to happen. So we don't know what's going on. It's up to the Lord. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And we'll see you in the next video, okay?